Hi all, this is Dana. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a really neat embroidery stitch called the woven wheel. Um, you can also do it in a different way called the whip wheel, but this one's going to be, it's basically going to make really pretty roses that are really, really, really simple to do, and you're going to love it, and I'm really excited to teach you this. Um, I'm going to be using this fabric here. This is uh, from Zweigart. This is uh, called Kingston. It's 100% a linen, and it, for those of you who cross-stitch, this is actually 56 count, so don't use it for cross-stitch unless you want to go blind. But yeah, I got a nice selection of some embroidery fabrics here. I've got a few different ones here, different textures and whatnot. So yeah, that's that. So in the last video, I taught about how to do some straight stitches, like a straight stitch and back stitch and running stitch. And in this uh, tutorial, I'm actually going to be using uh, one of the straight stitch variations, which is called spoke stitch. So you can see here, I've driven, I've drawn, uh, traced my pattern uh, using a uh, water soluble pen. So this does wash out. So if you are using uh, water soluble pens, then make sure they wash out before you do your whole thing. Um, just do it on a scrap piece of fabric first. Uh, in my la in another video, I actually explained how to transfer your pattern onto your fabric. There's a lot of different ways, so I'll put links to that one in the video description below, and also the one where I taught about straight stitch, about how to do the spoke stitch. But I mean, you'll be able to see how I do it from here anyway. So this is a woven wheel. So I've got, this is going to have three roses on it here. And there's actually a free pattern for this available as well if you uh, go to... Uh, peacockandfig.com slash join hyphen now. That will take you to the sign up page and uh, you'll get access to all the free uh, cross stitch and embroidery patterns, including this little one here. So these stitches here are done in uh, back stitch. And then I've got some French knots as well. I'll include my French knot tutorial in the video description as well for people who don't like them. They're actually really, really simple to do. The trick is using the right needle. And yes, there is a right and a wrong and keeping your tension taut, but it's literally two wraps around the point of your needle. So they're actually not as tricky as people think. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do the woven wheel in this one. You can see I've got two roses overlapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the bottom rows first. So you're going to you know pretend that your line continues out this way. And then uh, I'll show you how to do that. So first I'm going to be starting up here. So if you're doing a, these are quite small, like this full design is, this is a four inch hoop, but the design itself is about three and a half inches wide. Um, if you're going to do a really, really big woven wheel, like say a big rose, and I would uh, do more spokes, but you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So this is using all six strands of the floss. Normally with cross stitch you would separate them out, but with embroidery you can use as many or as few as you like. So this here is using two strands of the floss. So we're going to go into the center here. So try and get roughly in the center. And you're going to scream when you see how cool this ends up looking for the little amount of effort. The only thing with this stitch is it does uh, take up a fair whack of floss, so do be aware of that, especially if you're using six strands. So this is going to be divided into five sections. It looks like I'm doing quarters now, but I'm not. So you would be putting your other spoke on the edge of where that imagined line would continue out. Go back in the center. So this is the spoke stitch here. You can draw these spokes out ahead of time if you want to to make sure they're really evenly spaced. It's not a massive deal if they're not. It just makes for a fuller looking rose if they're more relatively more evenly spaced. One, two, three. Let's see, that goes on a little bit here. So I'm using quite a long bit of floss here just because that was the remnants of a skein that I had. I wouldn't recommend using this quite this long, but you can if you want. If you're using shorter lengths, then just you'll have to keep um, adding more in, like tying it off and adding more in as you go. All right, so I've got my five little strands here. So not cute. So with the spoke stitch, I mean, you could just keep making more rays around it and then be done, but this is actually going to be for a woven wheel. So what you're going to do is you've come down, you're done. What you're going to do is going to come up as close as you can to one of the spokes in the center without actually puncturing any of the, the threads. And then the magic happens. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
So my trick with this is I actually use the back end of my needle to push it under and over because that way you're not going to catch your point into the fabric or into these threads themselves. You don't want them to catch. You want them to be able to, the floss be able to run freely under and over and I'll show you. This is like the stupidest simple stitch ever but it is it works out so cool. All right so you're going to go under one and pull it and then over in the next one then under this one and over the next one and under so that's literally all it is you're going under over under over and you pull it, like don't pull it super tight actually and don't try to make these look perfect either like don't make them all lie perfectly because you'll see as it forms the sort of the little wobbles and imperfections actually make it look really really pretty so i've gone under this one i'm gonna go over this one so under this one and you can see it's alternating so if you do use more than five spokes make sure that it's an uneven number otherwise you're going to end up with a really strange looking rose all right so that's all this is is you're just going round and round and round and round and round oops i think i skipped one there didn't i under over yeah did so this is another reason why I use the back end of your needle because that way it's easier to back out so over under over so this is literally all it is so I'm just gonna keep finishing this up and I'll speed the video up and then you'll get to see it when it's finished. Alright, there you go. You can see I've finished. So you can see all the little legs have basically been covered up. Uh, so to finish this, basically all I'm going to be doing is just going into a little section up here, drawing it through, and then just tying it off at the back. So you can tie a little knot or you can wrap it around a few times. You can see like you haven't even gone through your fabric except to create the actual spoke stitch, which is cool. Go around a few times. And then anchor that off like that. Ta -da! So with um, embroidery too, I mean, like, you don't have to worry too much about knots being on the back just because obviously on the front it's a big lump of texture. So, I mean, it's not like you're going to be framing this flat against glass or something like that because and worrying about knots showing through because, I mean, this is obviously much bigger than the average knot. So for the next one, what I'm going to be doing is I will pause the camera so I can thread my needle and then I'll show you where to place the spokes for the next one and then do these two the exact same way. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back. In case you're curious, uh, the colors I'm using for this are uh, 304 DMC. The green is uh, 502. And then this pink is 3832. So that's what I'm using for these. But you can use whatever colors you like. That's the nice thing about embroidery is you can substitute with whatever you have, which is a fantastic way to use up leftovers if you have stuff randomly lying around from projects. So again, you're going to go into the center. So if you're doing overlapping woven, woven wheels like this demonstration, um, you'll find that once you start getting towards the outer edges of the wheel, like where it's overlapping here, you'll find it gets a little trickier just because you're trying to not catch the threads from the previous wheel. But that's okay. I'm sure you can handle it. Oh, the pressure. Okay. And the last one's actually going to be embedded into the other wheel itself. Again, you're going to be trying to envision where that line would be. 
like obviously it's actually drawn on the pattern but it's been covered up by this one so it'd be roughly around there ish that last spoke will come out ish right there yeah that looks good looks good to me all right here you go and then yeah exactly the same way you're gonna start right in the center not catching any of your fat your floss and you can see too how it bubbles up as you're going around and around so i mean this does use up a fair whack of floss but it looks so pretty so if you're really a stickler about using every last remnant of floss and this might be a good way actually these look amazing with um variegated threads like threads that change color they look so beautiful so again you're going under and over but you can see you have to sort of dip your needle up a little bit more to get around the other woven wheel that's already there but that's okay i like actually layering them because it gives a really it gives a slightly more natural effect anyway because you know in reality flowers aren't going to be all separated side by side all perfectly with a nice space in between but it gives a, a lovely bit of texture too because it, it ends up raising that section up even more so again you're just going under over under over yeah try not to catch your french knots as well so yeah especially if you're doing other stitches around these like like the back stitch and the French knots and things like that you may want to leave those for last and then you can bring your back stitch line directly up underneath wherever you happen to end up or you can do it first and overlap it like I've done whichever works best for you there are really no rules just do whatever works best but if you are doing stitching beforehand then know that that, that this is why I turn the needle around because that way you're not gonna accidentally catch and pull any of your other stitches Yeah, and like this would look gorgeous with if you had some like really pretty yarn that you've got a needle that's big enough to handle it. It would look really, really, really pretty. Yeah, so you can see here I'm having to kind of bend the fabric up a little bit just to get up and over that one rose. I'm going to speed the camera up now so in, until this one's finished and then you can see what it looks like when it's all done. so there we go again so I'm pretty much done now it's gone all the way around you can't really see any of the little spoke legs anymore so I'm just gonna choose a good spot to anchor it and you can see there's still a little bit of the line here but that's alright because that's gonna get washed away when I finish so again you can anchor off so I'm just stitching through it a couple of times then you can put a little knot in if you like and there we go all right so that's two of them done i'm gonna do the last one now i'm thinking i'm probably gonna do another red one there so that's all you need to know really and you can see here i got, I got a little bit of the, the french knot caught slightly when i was going around so do just be aware to not catch the other stitches or do them afterwards if that's easier for you 
So if you have any questions about this, please feel free to let me know. I'll put a, a picture of this finished at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. And uh, please thumbs up uh, this video if you enjoyed it, and share it if you've got other stitchy friends who might enjoy it. And uh, subscribe as well, because then you'll get to find out when I put my next videos online, you'll get a notification. And also, if you'd like to get access to this free pattern, please click the little button that's going to come up on the right hand side, and that will take you to my uh, Peacock Lounge sign up page. It's totally free to sign up, and you get access to all of the embroidery patterns as well as the, all my uh, free cross stitch patterns I have on my site. I will be adding more embroidery patterns as I go as well, because I'm going to be I've got a few more tutorials planned as well. So that's it for now. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye for now.